memorize the Bible from the front to the back and, and knew all the different aspects of theology and everything. Without the Spirit, it's dead. So, Lord, we just ask you to bless this message this morning. Lord, I ask you to stir my heart and put the words in my mouth, God, that, Lord, you desire for me to speak. I'll give you the praise for it, and we'll give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I want to title, Danny, the message that I'm speaking this morning. I want to call it Characteristics of Greatness. Characteristics of Greatness. And I'd like you to turn with me if you've got your Bibles and... Uh, uh, we're going to start out here, but we're going to skip around quite a lot like I usually do. It'll be 2 Kings, uh, the 4th chapter, and the 8th verse. Characteristics of greatness. 2 Kings, chapter 4, verse 8. You know that Satan always attempts to, to turn around God's definition of things. And, and, he, and he's the same with greatness. Uh, I know as a young person, uh, it's so much easier when I was in high school to do what everybody else was doing. It was so, if they told certain jokes, it was easier for me to tell certain jokes and to make a stand. And it's it, his idea of manhood is completely different than what God's idea of manhood is. We seem to make heroes of, of athletes, and, and uh, uh, which is dangerous. To give you an example, Aaron Hernandez, of the, most of you read on, on the New England Patriots how he, he was arrested for the murder of a so-called friend. And even though he's not been convicted, the evidence looks like he will be convicted. But we make heroes of these individuals. I read a story this week that really made me sick to my stomach. In Brazil, they had a soccer game, and I don't know if you've read this or not. And uh, actually had something similar happen up in Salt Lake, but not near to the extent of this so, several months ago. When a, a young 17-year-old player, I believe, who was 17, he didn't like the call that this volunteer referee had made. And the, I guess the referee gave him a, what they call a green card or something. He kicked him out of the game or, or gave him a penalty. And he went over and he slugged the referee upside the head. Well, it caused a concussion. The referee later died after about a week. And then I read this in Brazil. And of course, you've all heard of the different riots that were... Hundreds of them have been killed in, a, in a, a, a stadium. In Egypt here, just a couple of years ago, I think it was 200, over 200 people were killed when they were trampled to death. But the one in Brazil, evidently a referee gave a call to a player. The player didn't like it, and they began to argue. And I guess the player eventually knocked the referee down, and the referee pulled out a knife and stabbed him to death. Well, that's, that's terrible enough, but then the relatives, as this other uh, player was on the way to the hospital, the relatives stormed out into the field, tied up the referee, uh, beat him to death, cut his head off, and impaled it on a stake in the middle of the football field. And this has been on every news service, so it's not just a rumor. I, I tell you, it's just we... I don't know, but anyway, the, the message today is God's, you know, it's, it's uh, God's definition, it's about God's definition of righteousness. Characteristics of greatness, characteristics of greatness. Uh, let's read it, 2 uh, Kings 4, verse 8. And it fell on a day that Elijah passed his shoe in, where was a great woman, and I'm reading now the King James, yours may read a little bit different. And she constrained him to eat bread, and so it was that as often as he passed by, he turned in to her place to eat bread. Uh, the Bible doesn't use words lightly. And when the Bible says that this woman was a great woman, she was a great woman. And this woman, she said unto her husband, the ninth verse, You know, I, I, 
perceive that this is a holy man of God which passes by us, uh, all, which comes by all the time. So we know one thing, that one characteristic of greatness is that she was, she, she perceived, she was sensitive to the things of God. Uh, in the Old Testament, when the Spirit wasn't within, the Spirit would fall on an individual. And she recognized the Spirit of God upon Elijah. And she said, I perceive that this is the holy man of God which passes by us continually. She said, let us make a little chamber, or uh, we can paraphrase that, let us... Let's make a little room for him. Uh, I pray thee up on the wall. And they made it up on the top of the house. And let us set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick. And it should be that when he comes to us uh, to eat, he can turn in and he can spend the night here. It's a place for him to rest on, on his travels. And so... Another aspect of her, of her greatness or characteristic of her greatness was that she, she made room in her life for the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God was her covering. And uh, it fell on that day, the 11th verse, that, uh, and I'll probably uh, go over these just a little bit, but it fell on the day that when Elijah came, Elijah... Uh, told Jehazi, his servant, he says, uh, she's been so good to us, and I'm paraphrasing, go and see what we can do for her. Well, so they, they brought her in there, and they asked her, is there anything that we can do for you? She said, no, no, there's nothing. So she, her motives were right. She did it out of the goodness of her heart. Uh, she did it uh, for the, all the right reasons. And finally, Jehazi Elijah kept, but he was persistent about doing something nice for this woman. And, and Jehazi says, well, you know, she's getting older and she doesn't have a child. And, and uh, so Elijah brought her in and he, and he prophesied to her and he told her that she was going to have a child by this time next year. And she actually didn't really believe him, but she had a child. You know, some of you know the stories. And uh, uh, but there came a day when the child, it says when the child was grown, I don't think he was full grown, but we don't know whether it was heat stroke or whatever it was. He was out in the field working with his dad and he collapsed. And he was saying, my head, my head. And they, his father commanded the servants to carry the child to his mother. And the Bible said that he, he sat on his mother's lap Until the noon time, and then the child died. Twenty-first verse says, and she went up and she laid <coughs> the child on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him, and she went out. And she called unto her husband, and I want you to notice something. She didn't have this woman did not have time for small talk. She did not even tell her husband that the child was dead. She called unto her husband and she said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses that I may run to the man of God and come again. Another characteristic of her greatness was that she would not accept what was obvious as the final word. Her husband didn't understand why she was doing this. He said, Why are you going unto him today? He said, it's, it's no special day. It's not a new moon nor a Sabbath. And she said, it's going to be well. So she was already speaking faith. It's going to be well. <laughs> that was another characteristic of her greatness. She didn't have time to sit there and complain, but she spoke a lie. She said, it's going to be all right. Then she saddled her ass and she said to her servant, drive and go forward. Slack not your riding for me. In other words, don't slow down for my comfort, except I tell you to. So she went and she came to the man of God to Mount Carmel. And it came to pass, when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said to Jehazi, his servant, Behold, yonder is that Shunammite. Run now, I pray, 26 verse, to meet her and say to her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with thy child? And she answered, it is well. She was not going to waste time 
with any comfort, uh, uh, any uh, talk, small talk with the servant. 